Hello, today I'm going to talk about a well-known smell. Some of you may remember my talk at BotConf 2018 in which I presented the evolution of snail, which is another name for the infamous Turla EPT group. And I'm back to present what changed since 2018. In the past two years, we investigated several incidents involving Turla in high-profile organization. I'm Mathieu Fau, a marrow researcher at ESET, and my day to day job is to track APTs using the ESET telemetry. First, who is Turla? According to this recent tweet from the US Cybercom, Turla is allegedly a Russian sponsored APT. They have been known for more than 10 years, with, for example, the compromise of the US military in 2008 using the infamous Agent.PTZ war. More recently, they have compromised the German Foreign Office and several mailboxes belonging to the French military. These are just a few public examples, but most of their attacks are not public because Turla mainly target organizations that don't talk about cybersecurity issues. In the past years, the main target we observe are Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Europe, governments in Central Asia, diplomats in, in the Middle East, uh, diplomats in South, South America, and some private company in Asia. So for Asia, we don't have first-hand information, but it, this is based on submissions I saw on various total. Attacker's motives is important when it comes to defending against a specific threat actor. To our knowledge, Turla conducts espionage operations and is interested in private documents of his targets. Contrary to other groups, they do not push miners or ransomware. Thus, it is likely that Turla will stay undetected for months or even years. They generally collect documents in bulk, meaning that it's not possible to determine the subject of interest just by looking at the exfiltrated data. This is an example of a MySQL query that Turla operators were performing at regular intervals to collect recent documents in a central database. This shows that they were interested in doc, docx, and some specific PDF files. This is another example uh, that we found at another organization. Um, in that example, they use the WinRAR application and they are collecting uh, documents such as doc, PDF, or Excel files from specific folder and the recycle bin. When it comes to compromise the target, the first step is to get in, in the machine. Over the past years, Turla have used techniques such as spear phishing emails or man in the middle attack, probably at the ISP level, but this is not what we have observed uh, recently. Since 2018, the main cause of compromise are improperly cleaned network and watering all attacks. The former is quite common as it is a, it is a challenge to totally clean a network once compromised with Turla. Watering all attacks? also known as strategic web compromise, uh, consists in compromising websites that are visited by the person you, you want to infect. In the case of Turla, selected visitors are redirected to a fake flash update page controlled by the attacker. This is a summary of the uh, last watering hole attack that happened in 2019. They compromised several websites related to Armenia. And the second one is interesting because this is a ministry of the Republic of Artsakh and this is a region where a war took place this fall between Armenia and Azerbaijan. On those websites, they added a piece of obfuscated JavaScript code that is responsible for loading a fingerprint script from the CNC server. So this fingerprint script will uh, send back to the CNC server some information about the visitor. Then, if the visitor is deemed interesting, we believe that uh, this is a manual choice by the attacker, they will be redirected to a fake flash update web page. Then, the visitor needs to uh, manually click on the link to download the fake flash update and manually execute it. So, there was no exploit involved. 
Then, once he has executed the fake uh, Adobe Flash update uh, application, uh, a Turla malware will be installed. Before September uh, 2019, it was Keeper, which is a well-known Turla first stage, and then they switched to a, a newer malware families we call NetFlash and PyFlash, PyFlash being a custom Python backdoor. As the main goal of Turla is to stay undetected for a long time, generally months or years, they have a few implants dedicated to this task. Today, I choose to present three of them. The first one is Light Neuron. It persists as a Microsoft Exchange transfer agent, which is a plugin system for uh, the Microsoft Exchange mail server, and it's generally used by uh, anti-spam products. It allows uh, full access on, on the uh, uh, email traffic, as uh, it allows to, to set up callback on events such as when an email is received by the mail server. So this is a summary uh, of how the backdoor part of Lineron works. So this is a passive backdoor. And in that case, I will present a case where uh, the exchange server is already compromised by Lineron. This is not how uh, they first enter the network and compromise the mail server. I'm presenting how they can execute command uh, on the server. So Turia operator will send an email to any email address uh, of the compromised organization, and they will add a specially crafted attachment. Then this email will be received by the exchange server as Lightning is installed as a transport agent, uh, the, uh, one of its callback will be called. So Lightning will process the email, uh, check the, the attachment. If it's a PDF or a JPEG, it will check if uh, there is a specific signature. If the signature is there in main SAPS, it's an email uh, that uh, was created by a tool operator. So it will extract uh, encrypted data, decrypt it, and this decrypted data is a command to execute, and the command will be executed. So this is a passive backdoor, meaning that Lacnulon is never reaching out to a CNC server, but this is the controller. A tool operator is directly sending commands, and commands are executed. The other function of Light Neuron is to modify legitimate emails. So as I said before, it has access to the full email traffic of the compromised exchange server. So let's imagine that someone is sending a legitimate email uh, to, to anyone in the, uh, in the compromised organization. So the email will be received by the exchange server. Uh, as before, it will be processed by Light Neuron. Then it will apply some, it will apply some rules. So uh, this rule are defined in uh, XML and they are tailored for uh, each victim. So there is a rule engine in, in line neuron and it uses logic operators such as N, or uh, and conditions on uh, specific fields of the email can be specified. For example, to field or from field. And based on that, uh, line neuron will take some actions so actions can be modify the email, block the email, do nothing, and also dump the email on disk. So in case of modi modification, it's quite powerful as we can imagine that um, Lightning can be used to add some zero day in an existing Word or, I don't know, Excel document, and then it will be delivered to, to the final uh, receiver. Finally, there is another uh, version of Light Neuron called NetTrans. It's fully in .NET. Light Neuron, there is uh, one module in .NET and also one module in C++ for, for um, such things, things such as the rule engine. But in, in NetTrans, it's fully .NET and it implements only a subset of functionality. So if you want more information, please check our white paper you have the link here. Now let's jump to the uh, second long-term implant, which is Comrat version 4. This is a descendant of agent.btz, which was the worm use against the US military in 2008. It has been extensively analyzed. For example, there are publications by GData uh, from several years ago. Uh, this version 4 is in full C++. 
and it uses several design patterns, it, so it shows the level of professionalism of its developer. It persists using a PowerShell loader based on the uh, open source project PowerSploit. One of these is distinctive feature is its virtual file system in FAT16. This is not the first time Tula use, uses a virtual file system. For example, there is one in the Snake Rootkit. But so in that case, on this, this is a regular file, but once decrypted, it's, it's a FAT16 partition. It contains several folders. In, for example, there is a conf configuration for the common control uh, channel that uses email in uh, slash etc, slash transport, slash mail. And if we open the cookie.str file, we have access to the cookies that will be used to connect to the uh, Gmail web interface. There is also configuration for the uh, HTTP network protocol and also log files. Uh, there is one called working.c4 log, uh, c4 ch uh, standing for uh, change 4, change being the internal name of comrades. So in this uh, working.c4 log, there is a lot of interesting information such as uh, the last commands executed by the backdoor. The second distinctive feature of Comrat if it is are its CNC communications. So the, the first uh, CNC channel is called legacy and it, it is an exact copy of the uh, Comrat version 3 protocol. We believe it is intended to be compatible with all CNC server, uh, avoided the need for the operator to redeploy a full network infrastructure. The second command control channel uses the Gmail web UI and it is an asynchronous email protocol. Uh, by asynchronous, I mean that operators are sending commands that, that can stay on in the uh, Gmail inbox, uh, waiting for the backdoor to connect to the Gmail uh, inbox to, to retrieve it. Also, what's quite funny is that it embeds the HTML parser called Gumbo, which is also developed by Google. So first, the Tula operator sends an email with a specially crafted attachment to a dedicated Gmail mailbox. So these mailboxes are created and under the full control of Tula operators and are not compromised mailboxes. However, they generally mimic uh, the name of uh, an employee of the uh, of the uh, compromise organization in order to, to be uh, more stealthy. Then uh, the compromise machine will connect to this uh, mailbox using the cookies I showed you earlier. It will check for new emails. So this is an example of an email. For the sake of the example, it's displayed in Outlook, but theoretically it's in the Gmail web interface. Uh, we can see that the email was sent from another free uh, email provider called GMX. And there is also an attachment. Uh, it is actually not uh, Excel files. There is it's just the extension, but it's actually uh, encrypted raw bytes. Then Comrat will pass uh, the HTML of uh, Gmail in order to retrieve the link to download the attachment. It will download the attachment, decrypt the content, and execute the commands. So this is an example of a set of commands uh, um, sent by the attacker to Comrat. In this case, the uh, uh, application acpvt2.exe is the WinRAR application. So first, they will compress uh, some data. Then they will mount uh, cloud storage, a OneDrive cloud storage. And then they will copy and the uh, compressed data to this cloud storage. So it is quite interesting to see that they are using uh, another network channel to, to transfer stolen data and they are not using the command control channel uh, uh, Gmail. This second example, this is very similar, but this time they are using RPC backdoor, which is contained in the PowerShell loader kcl.ps1. So RPC backdoor, it's used to execute comments on another machine of the local network. And this, the name of the local machine is specified in the uh, IV key uh, variable. So uh, as before, they will uh, compress some data, then they will mount 
the, uh, the cloud storage and then they will copy uh, the, the archive there. So in that case, the stolen data isn't even going through the machine compromise with Comrat, but it is directly going from the other local machine to OneDrive. If you want more details, uh, for example, about the command control protocol, please check our white paper, uh, again on our blog, widgetsecurity.com. And now let's jump to uh, the, the last long-term implant, which is Scratch. Um, it was previously undocumented. Uh, as this talk is recording, I'm not sure if the white paper will be available uh, before or after BotConf, but you can check on our blog. So Crutch is a tool set mainly used to collect documents and it uses Dropbox as a command control server. According to uh, our visibility, it was active from 2015 to early 2020. And as you can see at the uh, bottom of this slide, Crutch is the name given by, by its developer. So Crutch was never publicly attributed to Chiola uh, when we found it. So we had to identify a few elements that allowed us to make the attribution. First, uh, on the same machine and at five, day, five days of interval in September 2017, Gazer, which is another Tiola backdoor, which was attributed several years ago to Tiola, was dropped at the same location as Scratch in C, Intel, Intel UPD.exe. Secondly, uh, the dropper and loaders of Crutch and Gazer are very similar. So PDB paths are very similar. They both use a CAC file and their loaders are using the same encryption key, or RC4 key, uh, to load the final payload in memory. It's also interesting to note that another group, the Dukes or APT29, were also there and the malware components are linked to uh, what we call Operation Ghost. So Crutch persists using DLL hijacking. This is not something we see often with Tiola. Uh, so they hijack Chrome, Firefox, OneDrive, and more recently, an old Outlook Finder uh, executable. Also, there are several versions. The last one, the V4, having been released in uh, July 2019. And in that new version, for some reason, they remove the backdoor functionality. So this is a summary of Crutch functionalities. So first, the backdoor part, which is available from version 1 to 3. Uh, so Tiola operators, they can upload comment to the Dropbox account uh, in the form of a fake uh, zip archive. So only the few first bytes are the uh, zip header, but uh, the remaining part of the file are a custom format of Crutch. So they will upload it to a dedicated Dropbox account, which is uh, as the Gmail account they are uh, created under full control of the attacker. They are not uh, compromised accounts. So on this on this account, we can see there are a lot of uh, fake zip files with uh, very uh, generic file names. So the compromised machine with Scratch will reach out to the Dropbox um, um, storage and then download uh, this uh, fake zip, decrypt them, and execute the command. So this is an example of a decrypted uh, uh, zip, fake zip. So the first byte is uh, the common ID. In that case, it's three. It means drop the file on disk. We now have the, uh, the path uh, where the file will be written. And we can see the content of the file, the beginning of the content. Uh, the two first bytes are MZ, which means that it is a Windows executable. So now uh, the uh, document harvesting part, which was uh, in all versions of Crutch, including the last one. So it monitors local drive, but also every time uh, uh, a removable uh, storage, such as a USB key, is plugged in the computer. So um, it uses a WinWare application. It's called eshlp.exe on disk, and they will compress uh, files that are newer than seven days from this uh, uh, USB key. So for example, PDF file, doc file, uh, Excel, etc. So once they have this archive, they will upload it to, to Dropbox. In 
So in case of uh, the Crutch version 4, it is directly uploaded on, on Dropbox. And in case of version 3, it's uh, first uh, being put in a fake wire archive. So there is a second layer of, uh, of encryption and this fake wire is very similar to uh, the fake zip. It uses the uh, official Dropbox HTTP API uh, to upload uh, the file. Uh, there is a token to authenticate to Dropbox and it's all coded in the uh, malware samples. And then the actual operators can just download uh, this, uh, this archive from, from Dropbox. So we monitor, uh, no, we, we had access to some of the command executed by, uh, by Crutch and we noticed that at some point they drop uh, a recovery backdoor we call service DNS. It's a simple bat script that persists using a Windows sidebar gadget. So this is the main code of this uh, bat file. You can see that it does a DNS query of type uh, HM4 to the CNC server. DNS query of type HM4 uh, should return adware information about the server. But in that case, we try and uh, it returns a URL. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, we queried this URL and it returned a command. So it means that uh, the DNS HM4 is the command control channel to, um, to receive commands uh, for this uh, recovery backdoor. And this is not a technique I saw before, so it was, it was new for me. So finally, some recommendation. Uh, so, Use complex unique password and two-factor authentication. It may seem that uh, it's very simple, but this using stolen credentials in the main way Chola used to uh, move laterally on the network. They also use a lot of uh, PowerShell, so whenever possible, you limit or forbid uh, PowerShell execution. And finally, they have several tools such as RPC Backdoor or Hyperstack that is used with the Carbon Framework to uh, manage machine the local network using pipes. So if it's possible, it's better to limit communication between uh, local machines. Then after a compromise, make sure to clean and reinstall all machines. As I said at the beginning, uh, they, they generally just keep a foothold uh, on, on the compromised network. and They won't need to, to, to use uh, exploit or anything to reinfect the network, they just reconnect using credentials they have stolen before. So change all the passwords, review the list of accounts because they generally create new accounts that they can, and they can then uh, come back using, for example, RDP. Finally, they, are, they generally move to the Active Directory server and also Mail server. So this is the first thing to clean because if you change all password, but there are Mimi cats on your Active Directory, it's kind of useless. So to conclude, uh, there are very few headlines about Tula compromise, but a lot of high-profile organizations such as governments uh, were are targeted or were compromised by this group. Also, they tend to attack always the same targets and can stay in the same network for months or even years. And basic hardening can complicate much of their operations. And they will make more mistakes if uh, uh, it's harder for them. Thanks for your attention. Feel free to ask questions.